In this example, we want to solve the system of equations that we are given. y plus 2x equals 1, x squared plus y squared equals 2. So remember, when we are solving a system, that means we are looking for the intersections. So our answer, or answers, will be coordinates. They will be ordered pairs. And it's often helpful to visualize the two curves that you've been given. So our first curve, y plus 2x equals 1, is going to be a line if we were to graph it. And the second curve, x squared plus y squared is equal to 2, will be a circle. So we're looking for the intersection between a line and a circle. And we could certainly do that graphically, either by hand or with our graphing calculators, but I'm going to show how to solve this algebraically in this video. So since one of our curves is actually just a line, substitution is probably going to be our easiest method in this case. So our top equation, y plus 2x equals 1, will take that and solve for one of the variables. It does not matter which variable you solve for, but in this case, it would be easiest to solve for y and just subtract the 2x. So if we solve for y, we're going to get y is equal to 1 minus 2x. Then we're going to take that quantity and substitute it into the second equation, the one for the circle. We'll substitute that in place of y. So instead of having x squared plus y squared is equal to 2, we'll go ahead and perform our substitution. y is equal to 1 minus 2x. So substituting that in will give us this equation. And notice now we just have one variable. We only have the variable x. So with a little bit of algebra, we can solve and find the value of x. Now, be careful here because you don't want to make a careless mistake. When you are squaring this quantity, that means you are multiplying it by itself. So we need to make a copy here, and then we're going to distribute. Or if you use the acronym FOIL, you're going to multiply first outside, inside, last. So we'll go ahead and multiply. First, 1 times 1. Outside is 1 times negative 2x. Inside is negative 2x times 1. And last is negative 2x times negative 2x, which will be positive 4x squared. The biggest mistakes that are usually made happen sometimes with that distribution. Let's combine like terms. We have x squared plus 4x squared. So we have 5x squared. Negative 2x and minus 2x will give us negative 4x. And then we still have plus 1 on the left-hand side of the equal sign and a positive 2 on the right-hand side. At this point, it's helpful to notice we are solving a quadratic equation. And anytime you're solving a quadratic equation, we are going to want to probably set it equal to 0 and see if it factors. So I'm going to subtract 2, which will give us 5x squared minus 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. Then we're going to go ahead and try to factor this. Now at this point, there's two methods of factoring for a trinomial. One method is guess and check, and the other method would be the AC method. I'm going to show guess and check first. So the only options for multiplying to get 5x squared would be 5x times x. And luckily, the only options for negative 1 will be a positive 1 times a negative 1. We just need to figure out where the negative belongs. So if we check the outside, 5x times 1 will be 5x, and the inside will just be x. And because we want those to add to get us negative 4x, then that means we know that we want the 5x to be negative, so therefore I'll have to have an x minus 1 and a 5x plus 1. Now, if you are not a person that uses trial and error, I'm going to go ahead and show the AC method as well. If you don't need that, then please fast forward about one minute and keep going. Now, for the AC method, you're going to start by multiplying A times C. So in this case, 5 times negative 1 is just going to be negative 5. And then we're looking for a pair of numbers that will multiply to give us the negative 5, but then add to get us this negative 4. So if we take negative 5 times positive 1, 
That will multiply to negative 5, but negative 5 plus 1 will also add to get us the negative 4. So we're going to take the middle term, negative 4x, and rewrite it as two separate terms using the negative 5 and the positive 1. So that would be negative 5x plus 1x. That is equivalent to negative 4x. Then the first term drops down, and the last term drops down as well. Now we have a total of four terms altogether, so we are going to factor by grouping. So looking at these first two terms, they have in common a GCF, common factor of a 5x. So we're going to factor out 5x from those first two terms. That will leave us with x minus 1. And then we're going to also factor the last two terms x minus 1, there isn't really a common factor there other than a positive 1. So I'm just going to write positive 1 out in front, and then we have the quantity x minus 1. Now what we have here, there's another GCF, greatest common factor of the quantity x minus 1. So we'll factor out the x minus 1 and be left with the 5x plus 1. So notice that is the exact same factoring that we had here with trial and error, just using the alternative AC method, if that's what you like to do for factoring. So back to our problem, we're going to set each of our factors equal to zero and solve. So if I subtract one and divide by five, my first solution is negative one fifth, and my second solution is positive one. Now don't be too eager and think that you are done because remember, as mentioned earlier, we're looking for the intersection points. So that means we're looking for X and Y. We want a coordinate and these are just the X values. So we need to take these X values and plug them back into one of the original equations to get the corresponding Y values. So let's look back at the original two equations. We have the line and the circle. I'm going to go ahead and use the line just because it looks so much simpler. It looks friendlier. However, remember, this line is also the same as y equals 1 minus 2x over here when we solve for y. So I'm going to use y equals 1 minus 2x to find the corresponding y values. So if y is equal to 1 minus 2x and our first x value was negative 1 fifth, then I'll substitute negative 1 fifth in for x. Negative 2 times negative 1 fifth is a positive 2 fifths. And 1 plus 2 fifths gives us 7 fifths. So therefore, when x is equal to negative 1 fifth, y is equal to 7 fifths. And we want to go ahead and write this solution as an ordered pair, as a coordinate. I want to make sure my negative really looked like a negative there for you. So that was negative 1 fifth for x and 7 fifths for y. And then again, if y equals 1 minus 2x, and we'll substitute 1 in for x, that will give us 1 minus 2, so y is equal to negative 1 when x is equal to positive 1. So we have a second intersection, which will be the coordinate 1 comma negative 1. And then as always, I highly encourage you to either get your graphing calculator or open up Desmos and actually graph the line and the circle and verify graphically that our solutions look accurate. I opened up Desmos and went ahead and inputted both of these curves. So you can see we definitely have a line and a circle and it's just a nice quick visual to verify that our algebra was accurate because we can see our intersections, one here and one here, and it certainly looks like these are accurate according to the solutions that we got algebraically.